How do you choose where to place the camera and frame the shot? Do you just do it based on what you imagined when you read the script? Do you just improvise? Or do you follow any rules when you're setting up the camera? Let's talk about it in this video. I have some thoughts about this that I want to share, and maybe next time it will be easier for you to choose the right lens, camera angle, and even movements with the camera. By the way, this video is shot entirely with the new DZO Arles lenses. We have been using them on a few shoots already, and they are really cool because they're so fast and so sharp and clean, even with aperture 1.4. And we're using the Sony FX3 now with full frame and with these lenses, you get this really shallow depth of field, which I love. I'll come back to those lenses a little bit later in this video. I bet most of us who are doing films and videos knows the basics. Close up for emotions and wide angles to establish the shot. But what about filming from the side? Filming from below? Using a wide angle lens versus a tele lens? Shooting handheld with a camera or panning with a tripod? Or why even consider using a tripod when you have the gimbal, which can create stunning movements throughout the whole video? And do you always need to use the camera the way you think is the right way to use it? Can you shoot the same scene in a different way? I just used to follow my intuition when I chose the angles for my videos and films. And there's nothing wrong about that, but my teacher at film school, she asked me, Anders, why do you choose the angles you do? I didn't have an answer, I just felt of doing the angles I did. But the challenge of her saying why actually made me think about it. It was really hard to explain, other than I knew that close-ups were for like emotional scenes and wide angles to establish the place. So I started thinking about it, and the more I thought about it, the more I could narrow it all down to this. So the only thing the audience sees is what you show them. So how the audience interprets the story has a lot to do with the cinematography. Let's take the character you're filming as an example. So here I'm sitting alone in the studio. It's quite sterile, it's not a lot of colors. Uh, I don't want the colors and what I wear to tell a lot. I just want a camera to tell something. But if I was to be portrayed as a more suspicious person, uh, without uh, changing the lights, without changing how I act or behave, <laughs> and even changing location, how can we do that with a camera? How can we make me more suspicious using another camera angle? Now look at this shot, for instance. How does that feel compared to the other one? Does it maybe feel like you are lurking around the corner to figure out if I'm suspicious or not? Well, you now know me a little bit, so you know I'm not a scary person, but Try to imagine how you would approach a suspicious person. Would you be careful? Uh, maybe a bit sneaky? I don't know. What about if we're shooting this handheld? Is it different from the tripod? It's, it's the same angle, but maybe it gives a different effect. Maybe it gives more of like a point of view effect, like you're looking at the person. <laughs> I know a lot of people shoot interviews with two angles, like one from the front and one from the side. And I never understood why people shoot from the side because in my, I, my idea is that I want to connect with the person. I want to be looking at the person from the front. I want to be closer to the, their axis. But just imagine, like, when you, let's, when you look at me now, it's almost like you're sitting next to me and maybe you just were, maybe you were reading a book or something and then suddenly saw this guy, me, <laughs> started talking about something and then you turn around and you start looking at the person talking. It's almost like you are witnessing a secret being told. So you're not in front of the person, revealing that you're listening, but you're from the side listening to what's being told. And then you go closer with the camera when the person says something really interesting. It's almost like you're looking at the person from the side, observing, and when they say something really interesting, your focus is kind of getting closer to the eyes. You know, you wanna also feel how they feel when they're saying what they're saying. So you're not moving closer as a person, but you're moving closer as your focus what you are looking at. Even placing the camera above the person, pointing down, or putting the camera below and up towards the person. What kind of effect does that give? Do I feel more powerful filming from the below? And when you're looking down on the person, you feel that you have more power. There's a reason why the cinematographer has a lot of power in the story. The camera is definitely a powerful tool. So plan wisely, and it will help you tell the story. I do recommend you to think a little bit outside the box sometimes. Can the opposite be even better? So all angles do something with the character. And when we now move the camera more in front of me again, hopefully you feel more connected with me and more into my space, which has been my goal in this video, to make you connect with me and trust me in what I'm saying. <laughs> Here is another interesting thing. When you say shoot a close-up, you think about maybe a tele lens and shoot it like this, right? Uh, but this is just one way to shoot a close-up. 
uh, let's say you are changing lens to a wide angle and you move closer with the camera. What happens then? Like this. How does this feel compared to the previous shots? It feels probably more intense, right? But it's still a close-up. So why? Well, think about it in a real scenario. Now the camera is just in front of me, really close to my face. And you never stand like this when you're talking to someone, right? So yeah, think about the real scenario. Are you standing really close to a person? That probably makes things intense. But when you move back, it feels less intense. But still, we are connecting with me. It's still, I'm, my head is the same size as uh, the, the wide angle lens. So it's more like you are focusing on me, uh, you're listening to me and trying to feel what I feel without being too intense. So choose the right lens for the mood, for how you want to describe the character, because, I don't know, a shot like this might well not work in all videos and films. As mentioned, this video is shot with the DZO Alice lenses, and they are sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a fast and sharp lens kit for high resolutions, this should do the work. They have a maximum of T1.4 aperture, so great for low light. They have 16 aperture blades for smooth circular bokeh, and you can get these in 10 different focal lengths, from 14mm to 180mm. And the first released focal lengths would be 25, 35, 50, 75 and 100mm, as we have here. These are those say that these are consistent in image resolution, flare performance, bokeh rendering and color accuracy. It's so cool to have the 100mm in the kit as well, This again with Aperture 1.4, so you get this really nice shadow to fill. Even though we're using a crop sensor, it's the 6K Pro, the Blackmagic one we're using. And all the lenses have minimal focus breathing, or at least that's what they say. So let's look now when Kim drags focus from the background to the lens. Oh, nice Kim, that was good. They have a uniform position of the focus ring and iris ring and 270 degrees focus rotation. The focus ring, designed of the double-sided imperial slash metric scale, can be changed by the user according to his or her needs. Let's talk about moving shots. When gimbals came, you know, it was very tempting for people to use gimbals all the time because you can use, create this really cool parallel effect, you know, moving the camera everywhere and people are like, whoa, this is so cool. But what happens when you use one effect all the time? Well, it loses its effect. What we want to do is to use camera angles, movements and lenses to create the effect and maximize the effect. If you use it all the time, it won't work that well. It's the same with music. If you have action music the whole time, it will kind of get tired of it. You need something, you need contrast, you need the opposite to make uh, the effect uh, more powerful. Like for instance now, if I had like one sentence that was really important to say to you guys, of course I could go from uh, this shot to a uh, close-up, but if I were to move the camera to really make it important, I would probably do it on the tripod first. And when you get to the sentence, that's when you're pushing in to really see that this sentence is important for you. Let's say I hear something around the corner. It's a horror movie. And I think it's an alien. I could shoot this with a close-up of me and then a close-up of the corner I'm looking at. But what if we move the camera slowly towards me and slowly towards the corner? What happens? The movement towards me is telling my emotions now are important. And the movements towards the corner of the room tells me that I really want to see what's around the corner. It's almost like our eyes want to go around the corner to see, but we're not doing it because it's too scary. So with the moving camera, we're kind of pulling the focus into the character's head or pulling the focus towards the corner. You can also do this with uh, digital zoom. You can zoom in digitally on me now to kind of get the same effect, but it's definitely best to do it with the camera on set to get the right parallax effect, things moving in the right way and so on. But these are not rules. It's very easy to just copy what you've seen in action movies or other films, but try to imagine how you would experience a scene in real life. If you give one person a camera and tell them to film an elephant, some people might focus a lot on the feet of the elephants, another one might focus a lot on the, on the snabel, or what do you call it? Snabel? The trumpet? The long thing. <laughs> trunk. Trunk. That person might film the trunk a lot, you know, the elephant trunk. While another person might do a lot of wide shots. Find your signature. Figure out how you want to express the story through your lens, through your camera. And uh, you can create some interesting stuff. So there are certain ways you can operate the camera to give different effects. One cinematographer might think that, let's say if we have a fight scene, we should have a, a shoulder rig, shaky camera, going close to feel the intense uh, 
uh, fighting. Uh, well, maybe another cinematographer wants to have, or director wants to have more of a wide static shot instead and make that feel even more intense. Maybe, maybe you should, Amy, Kim, should we test this? If you attack me and then we try those two settings. Come on. Come on. I hope this video gave you some new perspectives and ideas for your next shoot. Um, don't forget to check out the new Alice lenses, uh, the link in the description. And don't forget to check out our previous video about shooting inside the store. We uh, give some tips on how to shoot inside the store and also making a commercial. And we built our studio into a sci-fi city. You should check that video as well. It's coming out somewhere. So subscribe, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> and ha det bra! Yeah!